Hello, my name is Asher. Welcome to my home and welcome to Hub and Spoke, where we provide boutique small group European travel experiences. Today, I want to talk a little bit about what I pack and what I wear. Here is my luggage for the next seven weeks in Switzerland, France, and Italy. Before we dive into the bag itself and what's inside, I want to talk just for a few moments about my own dress code and my personal philosophy on dress. I have worked very hard over the last several years to simplify my wardrobe. Uh, what you see I'm, that I'm wearing right now is effectively the kind of clothes that I wear every day. Dark shirts, uh, jeans or slacks or shorts that all kind of match each other. What I have found with a simplified wardrobe is that it reduces my cognitive load. It gives me much less to think about in the morning. It simplifies my life. Uh, and it makes things more enjoyable for me, and it makes me feel confident in my clothes. A lot of people, when they find out, ask me, Asher, don't people notice, or don't they think that you're wearing the same thing twice in a row? And the answer is, absolutely not. In fact, they don't care. They're more concerned about what they're wearing because they spent all morning trying to figure it out. Uh, I subscribe to a less is more philosophy, as you can probably tell. Uh, I want less items that are higher quality, less higher quality items. They feel more comfortable, they fit better, and they last longer, I have found. Uh, a lot of people call this concept a capsule wardrobe, which means everything in your wardrobe works with everything else. I can effectively reach into my closet with the lights off or my eyes closed, and I can pick out a shirt, and I can pick out pants or shorts all the way down to my socks and ensure that they're all going to work together. So now that we've talked a little bit about my dress code and philosophy, let's go ahead and tear down the bag and see what I pack. So here's a picture of me uh, somewhere in the airport. Someone snapped. This is about what my backpack looks like. This is my capsule wardrobe in effect, some jeans, my heaviest pair of shoes that I take, and a comfortable jacket that can act as also a blanket or a pillow on the planes. So here's the bag itself. I'm going to start unzipping and showing you what is in it. So I love this bag. This is from a company called Air, A-E-R. It's the Travel Pack 2. Uh, my wife loved this backpack so much that she started stealing it and using it, so we bought her one as well. So we have two of these. I understand not everybody wants a backpack. I love wearing a backpack. This is about 18, uh, on a very heavy side, 19 or 20 pounds, so it's very manageable for me. Uh, there are other options. So my wife in particular, she waffles back and forth between backpacks and rollerboards. Here's a rollerboard that weighs effectively nothing. It's from IT or IT luggage. And there are a lot of different options, but the core premise is we do everything we can not to check a bag on the way to Europe. Uh, once it's lost, it can ruin several days of your vacation. On the way home after you've bought a lot of stuff, uh, that's okay. You can check bags on the way home because you are able to be patient waiting for it to show up. Um, I love a backpack also because it keeps me hands-free when I go to get something to eat, as you saw in the picture, or to the restroom or to run errands. I don't have to ask somebody to watch my stuff. It's not banging into people while I'm carrying it with my hands. And, uh, and I just really prefer it over everything else. So on the inside, I'm not going to get into every single thing that I packed. Melissa and the How to Pack for Women goes through literally every detailed item, which is absolutely wonderful for her. But remember, this is How to Pack for Men. And so I trust that you're bringing your toothbrush and your deodorant. Uh, and so we're not going to get into the very minutia of it all, but I wanted to show you some important things. The first is this Anchor Travel Charger. I'm trying this for the first time on this upcoming trip. Here's the adapter that works in Europe. This travel charger and these cables that you see right here, they take care of all of this stuff. So now I don't have to take all of these cables. I can just take one charger to charge my laptop, my watch, my phone and a few other items that require electricity. I always have a pin handy, and also new for recent traveling is I've got these little Clorox disinfectant wipes. Uh, and that pretty much covers this front area. On this front zipper is where I keep my masks because you never know when you need another. Uh, you don't want to sneeze in a mask and then wish you had another one. <laughs> Travel tip number 37. Uh, this very top small zipper section right here is where I keep passport, wallet, cash, uh, I also will drop my watch into this little section right here when I'm going through security. Um, talk a little bit about headphones. I have basically fallen in love with these Apple AirPod Pros. They have noise canceling built into them. This is all I take. 
Uh, we have lots and lots of headphones in this family. Another option are these Bose QC25s. The great thing about these is they actually plug into the back of the seat when you're on the plane going overseas so that you can watch videos but still have the noise canceling headphones. Somebody with me usually takes these from me and so I don't get the opportunity to use them. Uh, my wife uses the over ear version of these Bose. Uh, she doesn't mind giving up the extra space to carry those around. Uh, the extra comfort that you get just in those eight to 10 hours in the airport traveling over and back is worth it for a lot of people. So those headphones are definitely an important thing to bring. So that kind of covers this front organizing panel that I'm not showing you every little item that I bring, but it kind of shows you the gist of it. And then in the back of this Air Travel Pack 2 is where you can keep your laptop. So I keep my laptop back here on a very busy work travel schedule. I might also take an iPad, which slides right in there with the laptop. Uh, a few other items that I did not pack in here, I uh, wanted to show you, if you do a rollerboard, the wonderful thing about taking a rollerboard like this is you can take a very small backpack and keep it light to keep your personal effects in for the trip over there. Um, instead of taking that, because I already have a, something on my back, I actually pack inside of my backpack, I carry this little bitty lightweight backpack that has kind of mesh. It's not very comfortable, but it reduces in size to uh, not much bigger than this. And so I take this for if I have to go to the grocery or if we're running errands or if we're doing a day trip where we might need sunblock and a rain jacket and things like that, I'll throw that on my back during the trip as well. Of course, it takes up zero space in my bag. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up the main compartments. Uh, if you can tell, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but you can see I'm not using the full depth of this bag. You actually can pack more. I just prefer not to because it starts to get a little heavy and unwieldy. So now that we're jumping in here, let me undo these buckles. Now we're on the inside and the good stuff. Here's my toiletries bag. This is from Ikea. Uh, I think it costs like $4 and I'm not going to dive into all of the personal effects, but this is where I keep my toothbrush, medicine, all that good stuff. We get to shoes in just a second, which are in a different compartment. Here's the key to my packing is what we call packing cubes. Uh, this is my clothes. So here's packing cube number one, and then a little bit smaller packing cube number two. They fit perfectly in this travel bag. These are actually from air as well, and so they're literally designed to fit in this backpack. Uh, and then the final compartment of this bag is where I keep my second pair of shoes, so also my rain jacket. So I have a rain jacket. We'll get into that in just a second over on the couch. And then I have a second pair of shoes, which just like my sister, uh, I usually just keep them in a HEB grocery bag. Uh, so I've got a pair of kicks here with all of my socks buried in there as well. So that effectively covers everything in this bag. There are a few other little knickknacks that I've experimented with. One is uh, these sleep masks. I keep thinking that they're gonna work for me and they just haven't. Uh, I got this silk one, but when I finally fall asleep, it slides off my head. Uh, I got these little guys, which look like a bra for your eyeballs. <laughs> and they're comfortable. They're great. If you really need one, I, I would recommend this. I'll find a link for you to give it to you. It's called a uh, Bucky. Um, but they just don't work for me. I end up typically just falling asleep anyways. And then another thing that I did not show you or did not have packed is right here on the side of the backpack is where you can keep a coffee mug cup. I have a travel coffee mug or just a water bottle if you're traveling. A lot of times I'll recommend just getting a plastic water bottle uh, at the airport once you're through security and then you can use that plastic water bottle for the rest of your trip effectively. And then if you're on a day trip and you finish your water and you're tired of carrying it, you just throw it away and get another water bottle. Another travel tip. And then I think finally over here uh, is this rag. This is like kind of like for glasses. I switched from no glasses to glasses, I think uh, somewhere along the way. And I'm, I'm always wiping down my glasses because they get kind of smudgy and that kind of thing. And I just like a really big one of these. It usually sits in the car or in the front of my bag somewhere. So that's effectively everything I've got here. Now let's move over to the couch and we'll talk about the actual clothing that I pack. Okay, let's dig into what I actually pack. Uh, just as a reminder before we get started, your clothing and what you wear is very personal. As I mentioned earlier, uh, what I pack to Europe is also more or less what I wear at home. Don't go out of your way to go buy new camping gear or pants that turn into shorts with zippers. Uh, typically that just does not serve you very well. We want to buy 
and own key pieces that are going to work for you at home uh, just like they do for you abroad. Uh, another thing that you're going to see very often in my clothing is I lean heavily towards merino wool over other fabrics like cotton. Uh, it is definitely lighter, which is something that I'm always looking for. It dries considerably faster, so when I do laundry, again, I'm going to be gone for seven weeks. Uh, you may be with us for eight to ten days, and you may choose to do laundry uh, somewhere in the middle of that. We strive to stay in places that have washers, but they often don't have dryers. Uh, that's just not a thing in Europe as much as it is here in the States. Their energy prices are much higher, and they have a lot less space, typically, than we do. So I want to be able to wash things hang them up in my closet or put them on the side of the bed, and I want to wake up in the morning and I want them to be dry. Merino wool accomplishes that. It's a little bit dressier. Uh, I feel like it lays a little bit better on the body, and that's something that I appreciate. It performs and breathes much better in hot weather and cold weather, believe it or not. Uh, the nature of merino wool is it allows it to breathe in the hot temperatures and it allows to keep you warm in the cold temperature. Uh, the t-shirts that I wear, which we'll show you in just a minute, uh, are called the 72-hour t-shirt. They say that you can wear them 72 hours without them stinking. Uh, you will stink in 72 hours, but they say that the t-shirt won't. I don't wear mine for 72 hours, but you're welcome to give it a shot. Uh, I put my jacket on to start with what I wear to the airport. This is typically what I'm wearing, as you saw in the picture earlier. Uh, I'll kick up my shoes here. I've got my trusty uh, sneakers on that are basically the most comfortable shoes that I have. They're also the heaviest. I almost always wear jeans when I'm traveling abroad because I like to have jeans with me, but I don't like to pack them because they're a little heavy. And then I always have a jacket because sometimes it gets cold in the airport or on the planes, and this can be used as a blanket or a, a pillow somewhere along the way and it's one less thing to pack in the bag. So I mentioned my shoes in the plastic bag. This is my second pair of shoes, uh, some kind of sneakers. We have a whole blog entry on different shoes to wear. Uh, I, I am taking these on this trip, but I also absolutely love Adidas Ultra Boost in black. If you just really need a new pair of tennis shoes, they are by far the most comfortable shoes I have ever put on my feet. Um, I did not mention these because I didn't see them in my bag, but they were packed in my bag as a pair of flip-flops. Uh, sometimes when you're traveling and you're doing a lot of adventures and your dogs are barking at the end of the day, uh, you just want to put on some flip-flops when you're back at the villa, the chalet, or the hotel. So let's get into these trusty packing cubes. I think you're going to be surprised at how much fits in one of these. Uh, we're going to start with t-shirts. So these t-shirts are, uh, they're 75, 80% wool with a little bit of nylon, I believe, to make them a little bit more durable, but they're very comfortable extremely comfortable. They're made by Proof. I believe you buy these on a website called Huckberry. I'll provide all of that. So there's a black. Here's a navy. I think I've got a graphic for you that I'll show you all of this stuff laid out to talk about my capsule wardrobe. You can see these are all kind of dark style uh, t-shirts that all work with all of my other outfits. And so that's four t-shirts, three here and one on. That's four t-shirts that I can if I need to, if I really got cornered and wasn't able to do laundry with the properties of this wool, I could wear each of these shirts twice. Uh, I try not to wear anything that touches my skin more than once without washing, but you can. Uh, so that's four shirts. Here's a long sleeve wool shirt. This is 100% wool uh, by a company called Unbound, Unbound Merino, and it is just uh, deliciously comfortable when you put it on. Some people think that wool itches, and it does, unless you buy good wool, uh, and the hand is just amazing on these, so I really recommend that. And then, uh, so we've got, now we've got four t-shirts, a long sleeve t-shirt, I've got a button down, kind of a performance button down that I can wear in different ways. I can wear it as a button down, I can wear it under a sweater, or I can even wear it open as an extra layer if it starts getting a little nippy. Um, remember, I'm gonna be in Switzerland, we're gonna be touring glaciers and that kind of thing. Uh, then we'll be in Southern France where it might get a little bit warmer. Uh, and then we're gonna be with some guests in Italy in October. So I'm packing a lot of extra clothes just to hit all of those different weather conditions. I probably wouldn't take all of this if I was gonna be gone just for seven to 10 days. And then three pants. So I mentioned my jeans is number one. And then I've got some uh, basically travel pants, but they don't look like travel pants. They just look like slacks. Uh, but it's really nice. There's a hidden zipper in here that I can uh, stick some extra cash in and not be worried that it's gonna get stolen. Uh, and they perform very well. Water and liquids uh, just fall right off of them if you have a spill. 
and I can easily wear these twice without washing. And then I have another pair of performance pants. These are by Proof, the same that made my t-shirts. And then I have these slacks, kind of khaki, standard khakis that are also a performance fabric made by a company called Outlier. And I absolutely love these pants. They're extremely light, great performance. They breathe great. And I think they look pretty sharp. So now we've got three pair of pants, a button down, a long sleeve t-shirt, four t-shirts, uh, my jeans, and then this trip, like I said, we're gonna be in some colder weather maybe. And so I'm packing a thick wool sweater to go over all of this. This takes up maybe 10% of my bag. So it's definitely not necessary to pack, but I had the space. And so I'm packing that with me as well. Uh, this is from Banana Republic and my sister turned me on to this. They were on sale from like $100 down to 20. And so I bought that and I love that. Uh, I'm gonna get into, I'm coming off screen for just a second to grab some other clothes that I did not have in my bag and we're gonna talk about jackets. I take a rain jacket, just something very standard. It's not flashy, it's not exciting. It's actually not even that high performance because I've found that uh, we're not that kind of adventurers. We're not going camping in the wilderness for weeks on end. And so I need max an hour of uh, dry before I can find coverage. And so this rain jacket from North Face was something I found on sale years and years ago. I still wear it and it's still great. So what I'm gonna do is on this trip, I have a little bit heavier jacket that I'm gonna pack instead of the one that I'm wearing now. Uh, if you've traveled with me before, this is almost always what I'm wearing. This jacket is from Western Rise and it has a little bit of uh, water resistant properties. It kind of has a quilted look to it, which I think is a little bit dressier, but it still feels super comfortable and casual. But I am going to instead uh, take this heavier jacket by a, a brand, the brand is called Relwin. Uh, this is the first I've had of that. I just liked the jacket. It's nice and cozy on the inside and a little bit heavier. And so I'll probably wear this on the plane so that I don't have to pack this heavy jacket, even though it does fit. But when I'm, now you're looking at this thick, heavy jacket, a thick, heavy sweater that would not typically be needed unless it was gonna be a little bit chilly and cold um, that are now in my bag that wouldn't be in yours. And then I have several other options. Here's another, as you have probably learned, I love this brand proof. Uh, this is a Henley, which I absolutely love for layering because it gives a little bit of a distinction there with snap buttons. Um, so it's not just looking at a t-shirt every time. I've got a couple of other sweaters that are a little bit dressier. And then I have kind of a more athletic wool sweater that I use uh, if, if we're just doing kind of outdoor adventure style stuff. So I'm not packing any of that on this trip. I just wanted to show it to you. So all of this, except for this jacket, fit into the single packing cube. Here's my second packing cube and then we're pretty much wrapping it up. Uh, here's a luxury of mine, this go round. So I'm, I'm trying to take this because at home, I almost always wear hoodies when I go places. Uh, so I have this hoodie and I have not packed a hoodie. Sometimes I'm afraid they're a little bit too casual, but I'm gonna try to get away with this one. Uh, again, this is 70, 80% merino wool, surprise, surprise. It is very, very nice. Uh, it's not luxurious because it's a hoodie but I feel like I can wear this in a snappy casual environment and still get away with it. And so you're probably gonna see me in this hoodie a lot over the coming weeks and months. Uh, this is from Unbound Merino, the same company that that long sleeve wool shirt came from. I take a pair of swim pants because you never know. Uh, it's probably gonna be too cold to swim, but there might be a hot tub, there might be other opportunities to put on swimsuits, so I take that. I take all of my boxers, which I'm taking one, two, three, four, five, six, way more than probably necessary pair of boxers. Uh, that gets me through an entire week, including what I'm wearing. So uh, six pair of boxers gets me through an entire week without having to do laundry. And then a pair of athletic shorts just for working out, exercising and that kind of thing. So that covers almost everything that I'm taking. Uh, there we go, there's one more that got snuck in here. And then I take a pair of jogger pants uh, these are just athletic pants, kind of modern sweatpants, if you will. And I love having a pair of pants like this to wear uh, around my accommodations and where I'm staying. So when I get home at the end of the day and I wanna chill out, there's a chance I'm still with friends or guests and uh, I don't wanna just be a complete slob. So I'll wear these jogger pants. I also use these when I'm traveling on the train or something like that. And I just wanna be comfortable. I'll wear these in a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. 
and I'm good to go. So that is everything that I'm packing. I will throw the picture of all of these clothes together so that you can see how they work as a capsule wardrobe. And I'll also make a list of where I found some of these if you're interested in getting them yourself. So that's about all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching. We would love to travel with you someday. If you'd like more information on what we do, visit gohubandspoke.com. We'll see you next time.